Welcome to another edition of Living Legacies. I'm Tom Morrow, your host, and tonight we have a special uh, guest who has affected a lot of lives here in Oceanside over the years. To introduce him as former supervisor John McDonald would not be telling the whole story because John McDonald was one of the most popular uh, school teachers and uh, college administrators the city of Oceanside's ever had. Uh, welcome, John, to the show. Nice to be here, Tom. We appreciate you spending your time with us, and uh, you've been in Oceanside. You told me this was your this is your 60th year. Yesterday, I celebrated the day that I arrived in Oceanside, 1939. That's, is that 60 years? I that's, think that's 60 years. I, I can guarantee you, it's 60 <laughs> years. Uh, yeah. You had uh, you were born and raised in Colorado, or you were born in Colorado? Born in Colorado, and uh, started school in Escondido. I didn't tell you that when we were talking about this show, but I was about five years old. My dad was a Baptist minister for a short time in Escondido. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the desert. Thermal? In Thermal, California, the hottest, <laughs> the hottest town in the United so States. You probably thought you'd died and gone to heaven when you came to Oceanside. That's exactly what I've told people. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a clean little town then, and I, I just couldn't believe it, uh, how beautiful it was. How big was Oceanside? Well, the boundaries at that time were, southern boundary was Wisconsin Street, northern boundary 8th Street, western boundary of the ocean, and eastern boundary. Uh, Horn Street? Horn Street, yeah. Where the, right where the high school is. Where the high school is, yeah. yeah. About, what, 5,000 people? 3,500. 3,500. Yeah, 3,500 people, yeah. And you went to work, so, uh, you were 19 years old, just out I of high school? I was 19 and went to school at uh, Oceanside Junior College and yeah. uh, finished there and uh, then I went to Humboldt State. Where did well, you? Well, I went in the Navy first and... Well, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Oceanside and what you did here when you first got here. Yeah. Uh, you, you work, work for Martin's Market? I work for Martin's Market, which is uh, now the American Travel building down on Cleveland Street, still there. Yeah, Ranch and Coast, I think, is a, a realty, has an office on the corner there. And I guess Dave Hazel had, had, had that. He owns yeah. that whole building. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I work for, uh, in the summertime, I work for a uh, uh, dollar a day seven days a week till nine o'clock on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> and I was lucky to have a job. Yeah, that was, those were tough times. Yeah. Tell me about your dad. He's, he was a native, he was born in, born in Scotland? My dad was born in, <clears throat> in a little town called Croy, which is 16 miles north of Inverness. And he came to the United States uh, when he was about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, to, he landed in Boston with his father and then they brought the family over and they settled in Kearney, New Jersey. Uh, which is a Scottish, was a Scottish settlement for mm -hmm. a long time. How he got to uh, Colorado to marry my mother, who was a nurse at the time, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have really any knowledge and how he came to California. You didn't talk about that too long. No, I, I kind of think they may have had a little family fight and he left home <laughs> to see other parts of the Scott world. I don't know. fighting? I've never oh, heard of such a thing. Scots <laughs> fight all the time. <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, he was, uh, uh, became the Baptist minister here in Oceanside in 1941 uh, uh, mm -hmm. and died here in, in 1947. You're self-educated. Yeah, he apparently didn't have any formal education beyond about the fourth grade, but mm -hmm. he was a terrific student and got his uh, ability to be a minister at night school and popular minister he had a library that would would uh, show any anybody well, do you yeah. have a pretty good following in the in the church oh yeah was he hellfire and brimstone or was yeah he was pretty hellfire and brimstone <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact i i sort of passively walked away from the church for quite a while because i couldn't stand the pressure but of what he was yeah. preaching but uh I loved him and he's a great man and my mom was a, a nurse here for a while. In fact, she nursed at the old hospital up on Horn Street. Now you went to college at Oceanside Junior, uh, Oceanside Carlsbad Junior uh, It was Oceanside Junior College at that time. Oh, it wasn't, it didn't? Okay. No. And it was started uh, uh, as an adjunct to the high school and the uh, authority to start it was done by a, an election, postcard election, which is 
never been done, I don't think, before. Well, there, isn't that something new that they just suggested here in the last couple of years? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was yeah, done well, way most, back then, huh? Yeah, in uh, 1948, 47, something like that. Graduated from... Uh, no, 1934, excuse me, Yeah, because Palomar started in 1948. Well, let's stop a minute. I remember you telling me you made a trek across country to <coughs> the World Series. Uh, two other guys, that we play, I played baseball at the college, and, and two guys on the team one day in March said, why don't we go to the World Series? We knew we were going to have to go on the service because World War II was just mm -hmm. about ready to blow. Mm -hmm. So we worked all summer and saved up $100, and, and we fixed up an old 1931 Model A Ford, and we went to New York, and we were first in the, <laughs> at the Yankee Stadium for the 1941 World Series. You, you drove... The 31 Ford all the way across. All the way back. <laughs> we were gone six weeks on a hundred dollars. Did you have any trouble? Uh, not that I remember. Uh, we had an extra tire. I don't think we ever had a flat tire. No, I, we didn't. I That's can remember buying gas in Chicago for 12 cents a gallon. I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a lot of relatives on the way. So you were among the first to stand in line for the, uh, for tickets. Two and a half days we stood in line and got. We were in the New York Daily News and all of them. And they don't do that much anymore. No. It was a big thing. Yeah, for, it was a big thing. Yeah. U.S. Navy came calling. Yeah, I joined the Navy in uh, January after World, after Pearl Harbor, January the 2nd, and uh, got out in 1995. And I spent most of my time, well, went to the islands with the same flotilla that took the Marines to Guadalcanal in August of 42. You were a radio man. I was a radio man, yeah. I started, we started radio stations, never assigned to a ship. I was going to say, you, you were... You I were, get very seasick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did shore duty all the time. Yeah. But some of that shore duty was not exactly glamorous. Uh, no, well, actually, you know, in Fiji Islands, we were there 18 months. Uh, that was It wasn't good. too bad. Yeah. And Fiji was supposed to be the last defensive post if the Japanese came down the islands and mm -hmm. got that far. But then we were assigned to go up to Bougainville to establish a station on the beach after the Marines landed, and that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. We didn't ever get really bombed or shot at, but... Where it, were you when the war ended? Uh, I was in Oceanside. <laughs> in my folks' backyard. <laughs> no, it, it, but you were, I was, I was stationed, a, what, in San Diego? When I came back from overseas, I was stationed at the Air, Naval Air Station in San Diego, so mm -hmm. I was close to home. I wasn't yeah. married then, so I yeah. was home quite a bit. Now, when, after the war's over, you get out of the Navy, uh, you're, you, had some, uh, you had some encouragement at uh, the college. Yeah, there was, college, a, uh, there was a pro history prof in the, at the college, at Oceanside College, that uh, was really a mentor and uh, Dr. Bailey, Ken Bailey. Mm -hmm. And while I was overseas all the time, he'd write me up a letter, maybe five or six page letter uh, about what was going on and, and encouraged me to think about going to school after I got out. Mm -hmm. I almost stayed in the Navy as a career because I was very close to being a chief petty officer and uh, it was a good life. I wasn't married and I enjoyed what I was doing. But came back and went up and he went to Humboldt in the meantime. Humboldt State? Humboldt State. And so he encouraged me to come to Humboldt. Where is Humboldt State? In Eureka. Well, no, Way in Arcata, California, which Way is up in the northern part seven of the state. miles of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, beautiful country. And I was up there for, I was only going to stay one semester and I stayed through 1950 and got my master's degree. And you met, met my wife. Met, met uh, Gloria? Gloria, yeah, who was a native up there. Uh huh. And uh, when I asked her to marry me, she, the first thing she said, she said, I'll marry you if you'll take me where the sun, someplace where the sun shines. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had just the spot. So we came back to Oceanside in 1949. In 49, you both got teaching jobs here? Yeah, we were, no, my fir our first teaching job, hers was in Eureka, and mine was at Citrus College. And we didn't, that was before we got married, mm -hmm. and so we saw each other three times after we got engaged and mm -hmm. got married in 1949. Well, yeah, but uh, and then when you we came, had a long... When you came to Oceanside, what, what was your first job here? Uh, I was a teacher, a ninth grade teacher of social studies. And some of my students were included uh, Herb Meyer, who's the 
been coaching football in Oceanside for 41 years or something like that. And C.R. Roberts, who was a big professional football player. And yeah, he, he went on to great fame. Yeah, he did. What kind of grades did Herb get? Good grades. Herb's a very smart, very, very good smart student, guy. Good student, Oh, yeah, and very well organized. Did That's he, why he's a good football coach. Did he, did he play football? Yeah, Herb played football. He, when he was a freshman, he was about five foot four. <laughs> But real, a real wiry little competitor. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I recall, and this may be part fantasy, I don't know, but as I recall, C.R. Roberts was about 190 pounds when he was a freshman football player, mm -hmm. and Herb was his quarterback. <clears throat> and everyone in a while, C.R. would forget what his assignment was, and Herb would go and give him a big kick in the rear. <laughs> and so him the but that's the way Kurt Herb has been all his life. He's a very, very competitive guy, but a great guy. Now you became uh, dean of students? At I, was a, I was a vice principal for three years and uh, that gave me the, uh, the knowledge that that's what I didn't want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. I didn't want to deal with kids who were having problems every day. You were kind of the the, the heavy. The I was school. a I was a guy, and I, and I meet people now every once in a while, boys or men now. Say, uh -huh. You remember when you kicked me out of school? I, said, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> but then I went to I went to UCLA for my doctorate. We took a year's leave of absence, two years leave of absence, mm -hmm. and my wife taught at Culver City. And then when I was up there, I met another mentor, Dr. Johnson, who was big in the junior college movement. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got interested in going into the community college. And so when we wanted to come back to Oceanside after two years, uh, there was a job open, a baseball coaching job and a teaching job in the college. And that's how I got back into college. So I was a teacher for two years. How long were you the coach? But, uh... well, I coached baseball for almost 10 years. I uh, was a I was a graduate student coach at Humboldt, and then I coached at Citrus, and then I coached at Oceanside High School, and then I coached at Oceanside Car Carlsbad College. If memory serves you, uh, you helped a, a couple of uh, of our our local uh, fellows uh, begin their professional ladder. Well, actually, they they did it themselves, but uh, Chris Chambliss was an example of a of a chap who was at the right place at the right time. But didn't you arrange for a, for a uh, scout to come down and take a look at him? Yeah, I was, a, I was a good friend of the baseball coach at UCLA. And one day when I was president of college he, at Miracosta, he called me on the telephone late in the afternoon and said, I'm in San Diego and I'm scouting a third baseman at San Diego City College. Do you have anybody up there that can play first base? I said, yeah, we have a good first baseman up here. <laughs> so he said, I'll drop by and have a look. So he came up and went out to practice, and Chris uh, hit, he, he said to Chris, uh, go up and hit a few, let me see your swing. He hit seven over the right field fence, and he was signed. <laughs> right on the spot, huh? Yeah, and, and, and when he went to UCLA, he, he was the home run hitting leader in the, uh, in the nation. Uh, he was signed by Cleveland out of UCLA. He didn't finish the four years there. Uh, and and uh, they assigned him to, uh, I think, Wichita uh, minor league club. And he was rookie of the year there, and he was rookie of the year at Cleveland. And he played 13 years in the majors. Yeah, and he was now a, today coach. He's a batting coach for the for the, the Yankees. For the Yankees. Yeah. He was at he was in Atlanta for a while. And w Willie Buchanan yeah. told me one time that if it wasn't for John McDonald, I would never have gotten an education. Well, that's. He never told me that. <laughs> so but he Willie said you were responsible for, for getting him into college and yeah. going down to San Diego State. Yeah. And well, Willie, of course, Willie, the rest is history. Willie was a great football player in high school. <clears throat> and uh, we had a great football team the year that he and several others came <clears throat> and uh, to Miracosta. In fact, we played in the state championship playoffs. And I guess just because maybe we chatted about going on mm -hmm. He, uh, Don, uh, Coriel, I think, came to to San Diego State about the same time. Don and he, Coriel, and he came up and uh, and recruited Willie. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you started. just happened to kind of maybe just put people together. Well, 
<laughs> That's my job. That was yeah. my job. <laughs> Still is. Well, we've we've gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves. But you, uh, <coughs> make long story short, you ended up uh, as president of the of the college, and uh, that yeah. that college voted to to build a new campus. Yeah, yeah. That was a very exciting period because the the land that uh, we wanted to buy was owned by Sonia Henney and she didn't want to sell it. <laughs> so we had to go into condemnation and, uh, and we had an opportunity to visit her in her home in Beverly She had three homes with uh -huh. Beverly Hills and I tried very hard to get her to donate the land and we named the college for her or in some way uh -huh. honor her. But no, she had uh, other, other uh, aspirations because they were trying to build a, an art center in Oslo, Norway, she mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and her husband. And they were going to trade the land here for well, some land over there, and oh, we I had see. to interrupt that. But then we, we, uh, we just had a great time building the college and saw it come out of the ground. And for a while, you were the only uh, president of a community college that had graduated from their own community college. That's what they told me, yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't, I, I don't know how many there are now, but I think there was one chap at Riverside City College who mm -hmm. graduated from Riverside. Yeah. I, I, you know, I liked Oceanside so well. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of opportunities, not a lot, but I had several opportunities to go to other colleges and and I added up the pluses and minuses and my wife kept saying, what do you want to go and take over somebody else's problems for? You've got a good school here. <laughs> but, but we were a very small college. Now, how, how big was uh, Maricosta when you opened the doors up there? Well, I probably had uh, 600 day students and maybe 2,000 This is in 1964? Yeah, yes. Today it's got about 10,000. At least. Mm -hmm. When you count all the programs, they're probably, it's 15,000. 15, Didn't you tell me that, uh, that uh, the, day, uh, the night before classes opened, <laughs> you had well, to get the, the street paved, uh, Bernard? Uh, when the bond issue was passed, uh, the high school needed the space where the college was across the street from where the high school was. Uh -huh. And when it was passed, it was passed on my birthday in 1961. Mm -hmm. and then the high school, we had split districts, and the high school wanted the space. So we said we will get out of the buildings downtown in September of 64, three or something like that. Mm -hmm. Two years to build the whole thing. We weren't finished. <laughs> you didn't have that campus done. <laughs> no. And so the day, the night before, we were to have students come to the campus up on the hill. They paved the road. That was, <laughs> that was very close. <laughs> the, the asphalt was still a little bit damp the next morning. Yeah, huh? right. And the last building I was involved in was building the library. I'm uh, building the uh, a theater up there. And then uh, I retired in 1982, so. It's still going well. Well, yeah, you thought you retired. You you <laughs> then ran for city council. Yeah, there was a little turmoil in the city then, and uh, there was a John. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, turmoil in Oceanside. We haven't we haven't gone to a recall election lately, <laughs> and there was one, and and uh, three of the council, two of the council members were recalled, and then a third one retired. So, it was an open seat, mm -hmm. and uh, I was too young to. To not do anything, yeah. so I did run and was elected, and then opportunity for an open seat at, well, no, not an open seat, contested seat for the Board of Supervisors. Well, you you kind of got the political bug then, didn't you? I mean, uh, did you, you kind of liked elected, uh, elected life? It's a very, it's a very rewarding experience in lots of ways, uh, but you have to maintain your, your poise because it's very seductive too, yeah. and in the sense that people tell you how great you are, and if you start to believe that, <laughs> you end up getting in big trouble. You especially don't believe your own press. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, but uh, I enjoyed it, and I didn't have to run the second time. I had no no opposition, and I told people when I ran the first time I would only spend eight years there, and. Fulfilled all of those commitments. Well, you, as as uh, city uh, council member, uh, uh, was there any uh, any significant uh, 
accomplishments that the council had uh, done uh, during that four-year period? Well, one of the things that we had done was we we uh, built a new pier. Mm -hmm. We uh, uh, tore down the old strand buildings that were uh, housed a lot of not too not too nice people, uh -huh. and uh, and built all those condos down on the oh, beach see, that yeah. came at that yeah. time. And then we were involved deeply in the planning of the of the uh, uh, city hall. Mm -hmm. The and new city I, hall. I wasn't there when it was dedicated, but we we you were there. I was the, there just for the beginning. In fact, they were nice and put my name on the sign as well, a contributor good. too. But at the county, you uh, you had quite a bit of. Uh, there was a lot of accomplishment at the county for those eight years you were on the board. I think though. One thing that we tried to do is to represent the people and stay close to the people. Uh, Borrego Springs was one of the parts of the district way down in the mm -hmm. desert. Mm -hmm. And when I first went down there, they, they made me feel like a, a king uh -huh. because they had never been represented before. Because they only had 1,700 votes and they, you know, they didn't carry a lot of political weight. But uh, I represented them and, and, and then was involved in the final stages of the term, my second term, in getting the uh, new courthouse in Vista completed. Mm -hmm. Although I still, I wasn't there at the time of the completion. Bill Horn took over. New jail and the... And the uh, Eden, I broke ground for the new jail, although I didn't have a lot of, to do with getting the new jail. Paul Eckert had yeah. worked that out. Yeah. So, but it was a very challenging learning experience for me. You had um, you had a lot of help along the way, of course. And I, it was Victor Matura, who just died recently. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he he was one that uh, <laughs> Vic, Victor, he was one of your supporters. Yeah, right? Victor. Uh, I met Victor uh, on the steps of the <clears throat> of the uh, post office in Rancho Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Victor had a golf cart that looked like a little fire engine, and he mm -hmm. was quite a golfer. And one day when I was handing out campaign leaflets, Victor Mature drove up in his golf cart, and he, we started talking. And he said, I think I'll vote for you. And so <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of him that shows a, a little note from him. He says, I, I voted for you. I would vote for you four or five times if I could, or, or something <laughs> like that. And I kept that as a kind of a treasure. I think everybody's got a Victor Mature story that knew him. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I knew him he was, briefly he and was a interviewed him. And uh, you know, he, he was a, he was a, an individual. Really, there was no really one was. like him. So. But I only saw him a couple of times, and uh, when he gave me the, he sent me the picture. As a matter of fact. Yeah. The um, you retired in. Uh, <clears throat> Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Actually, the term end, ended in uh, in ninety uh, January ninety-five, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, just before that, I lost my wife Gloria. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then uh, God was good to me, and I have another wife that's a beautiful lady. And your your wife's name is Aileen. Aileen, yeah. right? You have three very successful sons. I was, I, I give that credit to the mom, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know but, Kurt. I, yeah. I don't know the other two, but Kurt <coughs> is uh, is uh, vice president at Hearst uh, Corporation in New York, yes, which yeah. is uh, the, the number two guy of the news divisions. Or yeah. is he running the news division? Well, actually, he's the vice president of the division. They have a president of that division mm -hmm. uh, that he worked mm -hmm. with in San Antonio, and mm -hmm. that's how he made the connection with Hearst, worked down there for two years with the Hearst newspaper. Eric lives in? Eric in is in Salt Lake. He's in the construction industry, mm -hmm. and uh, he likes Salt Lake. And Michael, Michael is, is uh, uh, Thousand Oaks, and he's the president now of JBL, which is the largest maker of sound equipment, I guess, in the world, I don't know, something like and, that. And he's a graduate of KOCT. He learned, uh, he, he started. He started right at this, uh, in this studio, or in this not, station. Not, yeah, in this, in the station, for it, was down, it was down on Hill Street, yeah. uh, near where the blade, the old blade uh, was. But that's where he decided this is what he wanted to do for yeah, a living. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he volunteered. He yeah. was 13 years old and he volunteered to help. And uh, he got so involved in it that uh, he, when he went to San Diego State, he got involved with uh, the Greek theater there and they had a lot of 
productions, uh, musical productions, mm -hmm. and he went into that for Didn't a while. Didn't he do the sound for the Republican National Convention? Didn't you tell me? Uh, yeah, I guess that was one of them. He yeah. also did the sound for the inauguration uh, when uh, Reagan was inaugurated the last time. And uh, he's done, he was uh, on the uh, Olympic Games opening and closing ceremonies at the 84 Olympic Games. So he's, for a young guy, he's really had some experiences. Well, and Bill Sinatra, frankly, who was on the staff here. He's our chief engineer here he, at KOC. He just poured things into Mike when he was a kid, yeah. and he's never That's forgotten great. that. John, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Uh, you and I know each other from Rotary Club, and uh, yeah, I know good. that's uh, that's that's uh, another one of your uh, uh, favorite uh, organizations. And I uh, I know there's a lot more to talk about, I but this, there's only so much time. I in, know, I know. In a 30-minute program. Well, I enjoy this because it makes me recall things in my right. past that I enjoyed too. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Tom. I'm Tom Morrow. This has been Living Legacies. I hope you've enjoyed this one of our Oceanside Living Legacies. This program is made possible through the generous underwriting grants of Hatter Williams and Pretty Insurance Services of Oceanside, providing North County with complete insurance needs for more than half a century. The TriQuest Corporation providing quality office and manufacturing space in Oceanside. McCabe's Bridge Ocean View Restaurant for fine dining while overlooking the harbor and the Pacific Ocean. And the North County Times, serving all of North County with complete local daily news coverage and internet services.